Well, as we told you, we're now set to usher in our first guest, Dr. Adito Kumbo Pierce, a seasoned scholar and member of the People's Democratic Party. A good morning, Dr. Pierce, and welcome to the morning show. All right, uh, let's start this way. Of course, we will talk uh, essentially uh, on the by-election uh, that is coming up next Saturday, uh, the 3rd uh, of February. And as you know, uh, the Suru Liri constituency one uh, is one of uh, those that INEC has scheduled among a few others across the country. Uh, two things for me, sir. Uh, first is to ask directly from you if there's an update uh, regarding the kidnap of the chairman of your party uh, in Lagos State, uh, um, uh, uh, Chairman Philip Ivoje, who was kidnapped a few days ago on his way back to Lagos uh, along the Lagos Ibado Expressway. Uh, given the fact that it's just about a week uh, to that election, do you think that his absence uh, will affect your chances? And more importantly, uh, is there an update on, on his kidnap? Well, first of all, the update that we have is that our uh, state chairman in Ogun State is uh, negotiating and talking on behalf of the party with the, uh, with the uh, security forces as well as the uh, abductors. Uh, we know that uh, Chief Ivoji, our state chairman, has spoken to some of our leaders in Lagos State, so we know he's uh, well and that uh, negotiations are continuing, and uh, we hope that uh, in a couple of days from now, before the election, that uh, he would have been released. Well, all right, it's good to hear that. Oh, let's uh, discuss, um, on, uh, let's stay on the topic today. Uh, it's about the uh, by-elections for February th uh, uh, 3rd. I'd like to know what you make of INEX uh, preparedness um, for the uh, election, and what are some of the changes, uh, or what changes are you looking to implement if you were to clinch the Siruliri uh, federal constituency seat? The, first and foremost, we had a very good uh, primary election. Uh, so that uh, a legitimate candidate has emerged from uh, that constituency for us, for the PDP. Uh, we know that uh, a great deal of the time, uh, the reason why we lose election is because of uh, the intimidation uh, and the uh, sentiments that go into these elections in Lagos State. Uh, we are very hopeful that uh, we will uh, win this election because uh, the incumbent, uh, who is now the incumbent, who is now the chief of staff to the president, uh, was very uh, formidable. Is not there anymore, and there's been a lot of rancor in the APC uh, family in Surulere. So we are very hopeful. We have a very strong uh, non-indigenous community in that uh, constituency, and uh, our candidate is. Uh, very strong in that constituency. So we are very hopeful. Uh, so long as we have security and uh, we, uh, we make sure that, uh, that uh, INEC uh, assures us that uh, uh, our candidate and our voters will not be intimidated and that they will not uh, uh, be uh, barred from actually taking part in the, in the election. So if that's in place, if INEC does what it's supposed to do and the security forces do what they're supposed to do, uh, we should have a very good uh, outturn and the result for this election. Okay, thank you uh, so much, sir, for setting the tone of this conversation. Now, we're seeing this uh, by-election uh, as a three-horse race between APC, PDP, and a Labour Party. So I want to ask uh, what strategies the PDP has in place uh, to stand out and appeal to voters amidst this competitive landscape. You've also touched on security in itself. I wonder if, uh, outside of the uh, provisions that INEC is making for these elections, if PDP in itself uh, plans to to make sure that you know its candidates are secure um, and also standing out from others in this uh, in crowded field of, um, uh, I guess, fellow uh, people that are trying to win this uh, seat as well. Well, in <clears throat> in Surulere, the Labour Party is essentially an extension of the PDP, and uh, we are hopeful that our members 
who voted Labour in the last uh, general election, will come back to the PDP family and vote uh, with the PDP candidate. Uh, that's been our strategy, uh, because what we really need to do <coughs> is to make sure that members of the PDP who were not happy with the party during the 2023 election come back to the party. If they do, many of them are in the Labour Party, particularly in that constituency and in the whole of Lagos State, we are sure to win this election. Uh, the APC does not have uh, the numbers to win the election if our people come out to vote and if they are not intimidated. Yes, we are doing the best we can with our own security as a political party, but that is very limited to what the government can do. And that's why we say INEC and the security forces must come on board and make sure that we are not intimidated and make sure that ballot boxes and things like that are not uh, tampered with. If we have a free and free election, uh, we are sure to win this election. Thank you, sir. I'd like to hear more about how you plan to bring back members of the PDP who felt aggrieved in the previous elections. As you just spoke to, you said some that the Labour Party in Surulere is basically old members of the PDP. So how do you plan to bring back those members? What have, what have you done in the PDP within Lagos State to bring more unity or to bring back members of your party? And I'd also want to ask, because I believe you've been quoted before as being said that the current minister of the FCT, Niesom Wike, was part of the reason why Peter Obi who was ended up being the Labour Party presidential candidate, left the PDP. So are there members who are still within your party that are going to disrupt this attempt at unity and reconciliation? Well, the last election and the evolution of the Labour Party was a, a unique uh, occurrence. Uh, uh, that is over now. And uh, since uh, you've noticed that uh, uh, the Labour Party has not gained much traction after its victory in uh, the presidential in Lagos state, uh, and that is because uh, uh, most of them are members of the, uh, of the PDP. So we've made an appeal to all our members to come back. And, uh, you know, the... the the, the governorship election, for instance, uh, in Lagos State in 2023, was um, a lot of it had to do with uh, both sentiments and uh, intimidation. Sentiments in the sense that uh, uh, definitely uh, Somolu would not have won that election if uh, the propaganda that an Igbo man was going to take over Lagos State was not uh, put in place. And so a lot of Yoruba people, whether they are in APC or PDP or the Labour Party, they now rallied round <laughs> so we'll look just for that purpose. So that's the sentiment, and that's not there now. <clears throat> so, and then intimidation, of course. Everybody knows what MC Luomo and Co. did to drive people away from the post, to intimidate people, to threaten people. So we hope that all of that, you know, that climate is not the same as it is now. This is an off-season election, so to say, so therefore we are hopeful that things will be more normal. And if that is the case, uh, we have a very good chance of winning this election and bringing our people back to PDP. That is the key for us as a party. Well, you know, I mean, I'm just going to um, <laughs> quote you again. You're, you're trying to say you, 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 you would like to bring back uh, your members back into your party. And, and you know, a lot of Nigerians have said, is there really hope for the PDP as an opposition party at this point? Because, you know, I, I recall that you were a former member of uh, Tiku Abubakar, uh, the 2023 uh, Presidential Campaign Council. And recently we've seen members of your party throw their support for President Tinubu, you know, the likes of Daniel Buala and even Reno Mokri, who the president wished a happy birthday recently. Not to talk of the fracas in River State between the state's governor and FCT minister, uh, Yesom Wike. Many have said, you know, they have lost hope in the leadership of your party. Is there still hope for the P PDP as the main <coughs> opposition party in Nigeria? The impression that the PDP is not a formidable 
political party comes out of the fact that PDP was so dominant for so many years in Nigeria. Uh, we were the only party, really, uh, that won every election for about 16 years. And uh, so people expect us to be as big and as strong as we were. But the fact of the matter is, as we stand now, PDP is still a very formidable party. Uh, PDP is not, a, is, is not as strong as it used to be, but for goodness sake, we have 13 or 14 governors. We have about 40% 40, 40 of the National Assembly, you know, House of Reps and Senators. and uh, So in many states, we are dominant in the State Assembly. So um, PDP thinks are not as bad as they are. When you talk about people like Buala, so Buala was never really a member of the party. Buala said all the time that uh, he was in PDP and, uh, uh, because of Atiku. Now, if you are in a party because of one person, then you don't have any principles. Well, whatever it is. Look, this same Buala was with me com conversing for uh, Tinubu on the 12th of July on a TV station like yours. And I was in the studio campaigning for Atiku. The next thing I know, a few days later, he's now campaigning for Tinubu, uh, for Atiku. I said, look, so he's not a member of a party, never been. I don't know if he has any political party, really. He's a political jobber. I don't think he has any party. There are people who have gone to APC, but not enough to portray the PDP as a weakened party. We are a very formidable party. And in 2027, we are going to make sure we win the presidential, and we are going to make sure that this administration that has been so disastrous for Nigeria in terms of security, in terms of the economy, in terms of governance, has only one term. If he is not impeached, if the president is not impeached before then, he will certainly not go over 2027. The PDP is a formidable party, and the PDP can only grow. As the PDP is growing stronger, it is obvious from the performance of the APC now that it's getting weaker, and by the time we get to 2027, it will be totally in total shambles. Dr. Pierce, why would you think that the possibility of an impeachment <coughs> exists at all for the president before well, 2027? Well, I, I, I have to be hopeful that the National Assembly members will do what is right for Nigeria. And what is right for Nigeria is that this administration cannot stand. The rate of insecurity, <laughs> the rate at which the economy is going, all the policies that this, uh, this president is taking. You know, the president we have is not the man that we all thought he was. This is not Bola Metinubu of 10, 15 years ago. This man is gone senile. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's destroyed the economy and the whole country is going down. If you don't see that, you see the National Assembly is the key. I know it's a tall order to expect them to impeach him, but for the sake of survival of this country, this man must either go or we have a review of the 1999 Constitution. The National Assembly has a lot to think about for the sake of Nigeria. They don't go there just because they're in a political party. They're not representing a party when they go there. They're representing the people, the interest of the people. If they take the interest of the people to heart, they will think about either putting this guy in order or getting him impeached. Impeached because it seems to me all his appointments are personal appointments. They're not helping the country. He himself doesn't know what he's doing. The economy is gone. Now, the dollar to the Naira is, I think, 1,400. <laughs> the cost of petrol, companies are folding up, unemployment is up. The country is in serious trouble. Something drastic must happen. That's never happened before. We never impeached the president before, I don't think. This will be the first time, because this is the first time we're having the kind of disastrous administration in the history of Nigeria.
You think Dr. The, yeah, so, sorry, just one more uh, moment, Shaitan. Uh, just a follow up on that, Dr. Pierce. You think that the state of the economy uh, uh, constitutes an impeachable offense on the president? And then you use a strong word uh, that only uh, a medical personnel can probably, you know, uh, validate a senility. But this is an allegation that. Uh, uh, many in the opposition, like your good self, have used while he was campaigning. But here we are, almost eight months after winning the election. The president is agile. Uh, his speech is a lot better. But you are still accusing him uh, of being senile. How, how can you prove uh, that grave allegation? I cannot prove it. But this is my observation. And if you go into the public sphere, you will find that a lot of people believe in the same thing. We are talking about making appointments that don't make any sense. We are talking about allegations against people he has put in office. Look, you said he won the election, but look, <clears throat> I say I never gave him the election. He didn't win any election. 31% of the votes were cast and I never declared somebody winner. That election should have been redone totally. Nobody won that election. I never gave it to Tinubu, and now we are finding that the man in the seat does not deserve to be there, is not qualified, is not doing his job. The first pronouncement he made on the day he was inaugurated was to, 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 to take away fair subsidy. Everybody, Economics 101, you know that oil fuels the economy because it fuels transportation, it fuels industries. When you do that, and nobody told him to remove fuel subsidy by itself, you don't do things piecemeal like a child. He was supposed to confront the corruption in the oil industry, as well as then consider removing the fuel subsidy when you have tackled the corruption in the industry. But he just removed fuel subsidy. And we told him, if you don't, Sanusi, former Emir of Kanum, did a video recently, similar to what people like myself have said from the beginning. Go to NMPC. <clears throat> if 90% of our foreign revenue is generated from NMPC, and there's no money in the country, then go to NMPC, find out what's happening there. The president doesn't want to go there. Why? Look, if you don't do your job, you're going to be sacked. If you fail on your job, you got to be sacked. Now we're giving him, we give him up to a year. After one year, if things go on like this, he needs to go. I know he won't go peacefully. Now it's left to the National Assembly. The people who represent the masses of Nigerians to tell him, you're not able to do this job. And that's why I say senility. Maybe that's not the right word. But he's failing to do his job. He seems unable to do it. It seems he just wanted to be president for the sake of it. Now he's got it. Now he doesn't know what to do. And we're saying based on performance, based on performance, in terms of the critical things that keep a country going, the economy, security, now everybody's been kidnapped. Even on my way from mainland Yaba to here, I'm thinking, anything is possible in Nigeria now. <laughs> Won't we just be accosted and taken away? Nigeria, nobody is safe. The economy is in shambles. It is time for us to do what we've never done before. Based on performance, Bola Metinubu needs to go. Okay, uh, Dr. Pierce, that in itself is a different conversation because he has been sworn in as president. And we just uh, have to just reiterate that when you use words like senile, uh, saying that someone, uh, you know, senile showing weaknesses because of maybe their age or something they are going through, it has to be something that you can prove uh, and not just, uh, you know, stating it on uh, a rice television. But let's move on from that. You know, you have uh, acknowledged PDP's national strength, underscoring that on a national scale, the PDP 
continues to be a formidable adversary while answering um, Ogenica's question. Now, the party maintains a significant representation in the National Assembly and, like you said, holds sway over approximately 14 go uh, governorships in contrast to APC's 20. Now, I want to ask how, what uh, you are doing or what the party is doing uh, to emphasize the need for the party to rejuvenate. What specific reforms or initiatives do you think should be prioritized to revitalize the PDP and enhance its competitiveness on both uh, the state and uh, national levels? The situation we have now is that we have uh, an acting national chairman. We don't have a substantive national chairman. That is the head of the party. Um, with this acting national chairman, we've been able to go this far. Think about what will happen when we have a substantive national chairman. And we are hoping that the next uh, midterm Congress will give us an opportunity to elect a substantive national chairman who will complete the term of Dr. Ayu, who has, I believe, been expelled or suspended from the party, who is no longer the, acting, the chairman. Uh, so Damago, who is now the acting chairman, uh, will be replaced by a permanent, uh, substantive national chairman. Once that is in place, you will see <clears throat> changes across board, across, along, the, all over the country. We also have some positions, like the National Woman Leader, who passed away recently. Uh, those positions, once they are replaced, uh, we will have uh, a stronger party, and we will go from strength to strength. <clears throat> As I said, if we can achieve so much with an acting uh, national chairman as the head of the party, and all the problems we had during that election, uh, 2023 election, and we'll be able to come out of it, and we're this strong, then we're very hopeful that we'll be strong enough, certainly, to win in 2027. Thank you, sir. You've spoken about some of the problems that the PDP faced in 2023 elections, and people would argue that one of those things was the G5 group, um, which was led by Nyeso Mwike, the current minister for the FCT. And part of that group, one of the only people to maintain his seat, is the current governor of Oyo State, Shei Makinde. And it's currently being reported that in the lead up to the PDP chairmanship elections that you've just highlighted, that the G5 group might be having a breakup. Are these rumors unfounded? And do you think these problems or these rumors that are coming up even about the G5 or about other members of the PDP are a sign of serious concern for the party's health going forward? It was the G5 solidarity that uh, created problems for Atiku Abaka why he couldn't win outright in the last election. Uh, now that the G5 is no more, the PDP can only get stronger. We are getting more united because, frankly, I believe that as things stand now, there is only G1. And the G1 is weak. So he's on his own. The other four are not really with him. Maybe Autumn is with him. I'm not sure. But I'm pretty sure that uh, Epeazu, Uguanyi, and Makinde are not on the same page. These gentlemen are full members of the PDP now. The quarrel was with Atiku, that's over now. Now they are members of the PDP, they are leaders, and once they come back to the fold, as they have done, we are stronger, and we are united, and we are ready to save Nigeria from the disastrous situation we are in now with this APC administration. All right, Dr. Pierce, you're not a, you're not a big fan uh, of forming a grand coalition of opposition parties uh, to dislodge the ruling APC in 2027. Uh, do you think that the PDP can go it all alone? Uh, and do you think that um, Anatiku Abubakar, for example, will still return to lead the charge 
as he has, you know, um, uh, uh, said that he is available uh, to lead the charge of a coalition uh, of opposition parties against the APC. Do you think that Atiku should just be a, P a PDP member or the grand commander of all opposition parties against the ruling party? Let me tell you why I don't believe in this uh, merger, as we call it. Through history, I can look at it from three dimensions. History has shown us that these coalitions never work. Uh, in the history of Nigeria, whenever you see them coming together, it always falls apart. I can tell you also from my own experience of working with merger, in uh, the 2019 election, as we prepare for the 2019 election, uh, uh, various parties came together, called them the Coalition of United Political Parties, CUPP. There were about 32 of them. And I was part of it because my leaders in PDP, uh, Professor Jerry Ghana and Professor Adeniro, uh, well, decided to leave the party uh, because of uh, problems at the time. And I felt that I've been a spokesperson for, 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 for Professor Daniel, who was running for national chairman against Secundus at the time. And uh, Secundus, uh, and Wiki was Secundus' uh, spokesperson. And I was uh, Professor Daniel's spokesperson. So when we lost the election to Secundus, we were vigorously pressurized out of the party. And I felt it was necessary for me to go with my leader. So we went to SDP. SDP now formed a coalition with all other parties. They are like 32. When you get to this coalition, every party, no matter how small, some of them, their office is in a cubicle somewhere. Some of them don't even have office address. <laughs> some of them, the leader of the party, the presidential candidate, is the only member of the party. Now, all of them want to be the presidential candidate. Everybody fighting everybody. So the whole thing was such a mess that Nobody survived in the coalition of United Political Parties. So from that experience and from history that has never worked, I don't see how it can work. Now, if you look at the present situation, you know, people say coalition. You're talking about quantity. We need quality. Quality is a focus on the party that is strong enough. If PDP improves on its own situation, gets his members together. The only reason we lost in Lagos State, for instance, was because we lost our Igbo community votes. And we appealed to the party. We appealed to the leaders at the time. If you lose the Igbo vote in Lagos, you lose Lagos. Now, we are working, but and when Obi came into the scene, we were in trouble. Now we have an opportunity to bring our people back. That's all we need. Now, you tell me, if um, Atiku wants to lead this party, and then he brings in Kwakwanso, and then he brings in Obi, who is going to be the, the leader? You think uh, Kwakwanso will now line up behind Atiku? I don't think so. You think Obi will line up behind Atiku again? I don't think so. There will be conflict, there will be trouble, and it doesn't make any sense. That's why I'm saying, we don't need that. We tried it in Lagos. When uh, Jandor came, he came with a group, he called them uh, Lagos for Lagos. And our leaders, I was one of the people, many of us told them, national leaders, that look, let us try to improve what we have in Lagos. Let's deal with our problem. You bring in an outsider, you say you want to. When he came now, they thought, every, look, we've never had it so bad because what he came, split the party, created conflict in the party. We ended up with the governorship candidate scoring 5%. It's unheard of. And the presidential candidate, Atiku, <laughs> scoring 6%. This is a man in 2019 who scored 42%. So this major business is very bad. So PDP should not consider it. And I have been told by the party, national party, that this is not a political party issue. This is not a PDP affair forming a coalition. This is Atikwa Bakas' plan, not PDP's plan.
Thank you very much, sir, for speaking with us this morning.